What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panjita for tutorials.eu. In this video, you are going to learn about Lambda expressions as well as anonymous functions in C Sharp. So this will help you to understand these complex topics that are really powerful when it comes to advancing your C Sharp skills. But before we get started, I would really appreciate if you hit that like button, it really helps us out and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. And now let's get started. An anonymous method is a method without a name. Well, who guessed it? And anonymous methods in C Sharp can be defined using the delegate keyword and can be assigned to a variable of the delegate type. This means we don't have to define a method of our own each time we want to call a method that needs a delegate. Since maybe we want to call it once, so defining a dedicated delegate every time we need one can ruin the code structure very fast. So adding to our previous example, where we created a bunch of filters, you might recall that here is adult, is senior and all of the good stuff. And now let's go ahead and create two additional filters where we create a custom Boolean expression as our filter and a second filter where we simply display all the entries in our list. So let's go ahead and go to our main method where we displayed all of the people, right? We called this method here. And now let's create a new filter delegate. So I'm just going to use the filter delegate keyword, the one that we have set up here at the top. And you will see that it needs to return a Boolean and it needs to have a person as the parameter. So let's call it filter. And here we need to use the delegate keyword once again. And then we can use the parameters that we need to pass. And you can see it's still complaining because first of all, we need to add a semicolon here at the bottom. And then we need to make sure that we return a value of type Boolean. So not all code paths return a value in anonymous method. So it already says anonymous method here. So what we're just going to say is just return the H where it's greater or equal to 20 and where the H is less than 30 and equal 30. All right, that's pretty much it. So here we create a new variable called filter of type filter delegate. So this is just a variable, right? Then we assign an anonymous method to it instead of an already defined method. And then we just make sure that we follow the instructions of that filter delegate and that is to return a Boolean. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're returning true if those two statements are true. So if the age is greater or equal 20 or less than equal 30. So don't forget that semicolon at the end. That's really important here. Otherwise this won't work because this is basically like creating a variable. Okay. So it's like int x equals three. It's pretty much the same thing that we're doing here with this filter delegate, but it's a little more complicated. So this here, what you see here is an anonymous method because it doesn't have a name, but it basically behaves like a method. So now what we can do is we can call our display people and we can use our variable filter. So we can pass filter. You might recall display people always had the structure where you had a title right here. You had a title, then you had to pass in the list of people, so of person objects, right? And then you needed to add the filter in here. And I'm just going to use my filter that I had just set up, which is this filter variable. So now this filter variable is of type filter delegate, which is what display people requires, because here you see it requires a filter delegate type. So it's really something interesting because you can on one hand just go ahead and create a method that follows the delegate description and just use it as we saw here. But you can also just create a variable which uses an anonymous method using the delegate keyword as we have done here and store it inside of this filter and then use that filter here. So this will now of course not be kids but it will be between 20 and 30 and it will display all the people that we have there. So let's run this code and see if that works. And we see here between 20 and 30, we have Anatoly who is 25 years old, but no one else. So now another approach of an anonymous method 
and that is that we can pass an anonymous method directly as a parameter. Okay, so let's do that real quick. So we call this display people method, and this time I'm just going to display all people, right? So here, all people. But now we need to pass in, you see here, a filter delegate. So let's go ahead and create an anonymous method. And in order to do that, we need to use the delegate keyword, right? Delegate, like so. And we need to, of course, still follow the same instruction. We still need to make sure that our delegate that we're passing is going to be of type filter delegate. If we look at it here at the top. So here, this filter delegate needed to return a bool and it needed the person. So let's get in the person as the parameter P. But then, of course, as I stated, we need to also return something like a boolean. So basically, we can just call it like so. So here, this is a very condensed line of code. There's a lot going on here. We're displaying people, but we also have a filter here. And this filter, it takes all the people and it just returns true because it really doesn't matter that much which person we put in here. So that's basically it. Otherwise, of course, you can also write it like so. This will maybe be a little more readable. So this here is our anonymous method that we are passing as the third parameter, as we are just following the filter delegate setup. So you see here, we're returning a bool and we are taking in a person as the parameter. So now you see the power of delegates because they are super flexible. They really just want you to follow a certain structure. The rest is up to you. And this gives you as a developer a lot of flexibility when working with delegates. All right, so that was a little introduction into anonymous methods. Let's next look at Lambda expressions. Quick pause. In this video, you'll learn something about C Sharp. And if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C Sharp developer, then definitely check out my C Sharp masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C Sharp. So you're gonna learn how to do the basics, how to use object-oriented programming, how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use link, how to create your own games using Unity, and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C-Sharp developer, definitely check out the link in the description below. All right, so we saw in the previous lecture how anonymous methods can help us to write the code blocks in line where delegates are required. In C-Sharp 3.0, Lambda expressions were introduced. They provide a simple and more compact functional syntax to write anonymous methods. The word lambda is taken from the lambda calculus, where everything is expressed in terms of functions. We will be using lambda expressions to create anonymous functions and methods. To create a lambda expression, we need to use the lambda declaration operator, which is equal greater. Also read as goes into or goes to, to separate the lambda's parameter list from its body. A lambda expression can have one of the following two forms. So first of all, an expression lambda that has an expression, one line of code as its body. So input parameters equal greater than expression. And then we have the statement lambda that has a statement block executing more than one line of code as its body. And here we just use the input parameters equal greater and then the sequence of statements inside of the curly brackets. So now let's have a look at that in practice. So now going back to our previous example, let's add a few filters using Lambda expressions. So here we had the filter where we showed all people, right? Now let's go ahead and create a search keyword. And I'm just going to call this one A. Okay, so I'm just going to call or search for a letter. And then I'm going to call the display people method once again. And I'm going to, just going to say, I want to display everything where the age is above 20 with a search keyword. So that means we're looking for everyone who's older than 20, but also has, for example, an A in their name. So let's go ahead and do that by also adding the search keyword to this statement here. Okay, so this is basically just a title, okay? This is 
the title of our display people method, the string here. And now comes the list of people that we want to iterate through or check to filter, so to speak. So now let's just pass in the people list that we created earlier, which is this list up here, list of person, people, and we have all four people in there. Okay, now that we have people, let's go ahead and actually use our Lambda expression. So I'm going to pass in the parameter P and then I'm going to run the following expression in it, like so. Of course, I need to finish the statement with an exclamation mark, but now let's actually execute some code. So I'm using a Lambda expression here instead of an anonymous method, instead of passing a method. Okay, so here we're just saying, these are all the parameters, equal, greater than, and this is just one parameter, which is why it's fine to not use brackets, otherwise I would have to surround it with brackets here, like so. And then I can go ahead and do what I want to execute. And what is it that I'm going to execute? Well, I'm just going to check if the name contains a certain keyword, which is our search keyword. So I'm just going to say if name contains the search keyword and the age is greater than 20. So the person's age, the individual person that we're currently checking, if that is greater than 20, then just return true because if we look at it, our filter delegate that we are replacing now or in which position we are now passing our Lambda expression is requiring a Boolean as we have seen here when we fill, set it up. All right, and now we of course need also to add an else block here. So else we're just going to return false. So return false, and that's it. So now no problems there anymore. We have basically used our Lambda here. And this is, by the way, a statement Lambda that we're using. So let me add a little bit of a description here. Statement Lambda, we have our search keyword. We check if the person contains the search keyword and the H. All right, and now let's look at the same thing. So at the Lambda expression, but now let's look at the expression lambda and not the statement lambda. So the cool thing is this is going to be even shorter in terms of the code. So let's go ahead and say that we want to display the people who are exactly 25 years old. All right, so let's just do that. We're going to filter the people list. And here I'm going to use a expression lambda. So I'm just going to say P equal greater where pH equals equals 25. And that's it. So that's how simple it is. This is our expression lambda. And the beauty is it's just one line of code, which is the power of expression lambdas. So here, instead of having to create an extra method, instead of having to create a anonymous method, we just use an expression lambda with just one line of code. And we basically achieve the same thing as we achieved here with our filters pretty much, right? So that's really the beauty of expression lambdas. And now if we run this, we will get the results here saying, well, Anatoly is 25 years old and Aiden is also greater than 20 with a search keyword A. So these are the two up here. And then who's exactly 25? Well, that's only Anatoly, okay? That's pretty much it. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Now you know how anonymous functions slash methods as well as Lambda expressions work. I hope you enjoyed this video and leave a like if you did so, it would really help us out. Also hit that subscribe button because we're uploading a lot more C Sharp content regularly here as well as, well, Unity content, which is also C Sharp content, so to speak. So see you in the next video.